שלו, רבותיי, <coughs> we are uh, reaching the Shabbat of Parashat Bo. And I would like to say over a few moments a very, very important insight from Rabbi Moshe Al-Sheikh, Arab Shalom, known as the Al-Sheikh HaKadosh. The reason why I chose this selection is because it's not only in Parashat Bo, but actually we say it every single day. It's one of the parashiyot that's in the tefillin. And that's the parasha of Kadeshli called Bechor. So at the end of a parasha, what the Olam comes along and says, Zachor et ayom azeh, asher yisatem in Misraim bet abadim. Remember this day that I took you out of Misraim. Hayom atem yotzim. Today you are going out. And the question is of the Al-Sheikh, why is the Torah focusing on the day? The fact is that we left. Does it matter if we left on the 15th of Nisan or the 16th or the 14th? The point is that there was a miracle that we left with Sraim. The day that we left is not the relevant part. The Exodus is the main part. So why is the Torah focusing? Remember, the day, look at the calendar, the 15th of Nisan, very significant. Hayom atem yosim. You're not leaving yesterday and you're not leaving tomorrow. You're leaving hayom. What is significant about the 15th of Nisan? So the Rav goes along and explains in a long introduction that the Egyptians, we know, worshipped the sheep. Now, what does it mean they worshipped the sheep? These were intellectual people. Can they believe that a sheep is God? They know that you could slaughter the sheep and you could eat it. How could that be a God? Any intellectual, intelligent people would never come to think that a sheep is God. However, they believe in what the sheep represents. And that is Rosh Shel Kol Mazalot. There is a concept that every month is influenced by the constellation and the stars. Of course, as Jews, we believe that that's true, but we are above the mazalot. HaKadosh Baruch Hu can change the mazalot and switch them into our favor. But the Egyptians did not believe in a higher power. They believed in the control of mazalot. And the father of the mazalot is actually called Mazal Tale. is the mazal of the sheep, which actually is the mazal of the month of Nisan. That's why... Uh, the month of Nisan, the uh, the season of the year is called Chodesh Aviv. Aviv is Otiyot Av Yud Bet. It's the father of the 12 months, not only the first month of the year, but in constellations. The Mazal of uh, Nisan in English, they call it Aries. Aries is a sheep. And therefore they believe that everything is the sheep. It's Mazal of the, of the, of the Taleh. It seems because that time of the month, the stars are in the image of a sheep. That's what they call it, Mazal Taleh. Fine. Now, if you know anything about Mazalot, in the beginning of the month, it starts to rise until it reaches the peak. The peak of the Mazal is always at the 15th of the month, when the moon is full. So if you would ask an Egyptian, what's the luckiest day of the year for an Egyptian where they have the most power? The 15th of Nisan. That's when the father of all the Mazalot is the strongest. If you would ask an Egyptian, what's the least probable day that the Jews will leave Mitzrayim? They'll say, well, they can leave any day, but for sure they're not leaving on the 15th of Nisan. Because that's our day. That's our Mazal. And therefore, Borei Olam says, et hazeh. Remember the day that you went out of Mitzrayim. Hayom atem yotzim. Look at the calendar. This is against all odds. This is the 15th of Nisan. This is the day that belongs to the Egyptians. And I wanted to show you that we can go above the Mazal. And I wanted to uh, degrade the Egyptians to show them that Dafka on the day that they think is most favorable and auspicious for them, today you're going to go out. However, it should be pointed out another major observation that the Rav makes. When it talks about us leaving Mitzrayim, if you'll notice, the Torah writes it in Lashon Rabim, in a 
in a in a tense in a uh, in a in a plural sense. Let's read it again. Zachor et yom azeh shir yitzatem. Yitzatem is plural. Ki bechosek yad hotzi adonai etchem. Etchem is plural. Hayem ayom atem yoseim. Yoseim is plural. What's the next pesukim tell us? But after you're going to leave Mitzrayim, you're going to come into Eretz Yisrael. Look at the way the Torah writes our entrance into Eretz Yisrael. Vehaya ki yebi acha. Yebi acha is singular. Yebi acha is one. If the Torah would be consistent, it would say vehaya ki yebi achem. And the pasuk says, Elaaris ashin ishbal abotecha latet lach. Lach is singular. The pasuk should say latet. Lachem, which is plural. So the Al Sheikh Kadosh questions why does the Torah now fluctuate between Lashon Rabim to Lashon Yahid? And he says over here a very, very important Yesod. When the Jewish people came out of Mitzrayim, even though they did the Mitzvah of Brit Milah before they left, and even though they brought Korban Pesach, don't think for a minute. That just because we did those two mitzvot, we deserve to leave Mitzrayim. As a matter of fact, the Gemara says about the Jews who left Mitzrayim, halalu of the Avodazara. The Jewish people worshipped Avodazara. They believed as well in the constellations. They also believed in the Mazalot. After living in Egypt for 200 years, through osmosis, we were influenced by the Mitzrayim. And therefore, the Torah is coming to tell us it wasn't easy to take you out of Mitzrayim. To take us out of Mitzrayim, it needed God's strong hand. If somebody needs to be pulled through a narrow hole, you got to pull them very strong in order to, 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 to bring them out. Borei Olam says, it wasn't easy to take you out of Mitzrayim. You didn't deserve it. It was Avodah Zarah. It took Chosek Yad, the strength of God's hand, to bring you out. Furthermore, the Pasuk reminds us that when we came out of Mitzrayim, the Torah says, Velo yeachel hametz. Velo yerecha hametz. Velo yeachel hametz. Why can't we eat hametz? Because we left so quickly that the dough couldn't even rise. Why did we have to leave so quickly? Because if we would have stayed another moment in Mitzrayim, we would have fell into the lowest levels of Tum'ah, which is the point of no return. So remember why you're eating hametz. Why you cannot eat hametz. Because Hametz rises, you're eating matzah. God's reminding us that really you didn't deserve to come out of Egypt. You came out of Egypt only because of Hesed and Yon. And the Torah is coming to tell us a Hadush now, says the Rav. When we would come into Eretz Israel, we would have tremendous miracles take place for us. We would conquer seven major nations. And we would conquer 31 separate kingdoms that were in Eretz Israel. Ask yourself a question. What's a bigger miracle? Yitziat Mitzrayim or Kivush Ha'aris? I would have said Kivush Ha'aris. When we left Mitzrayim, we conquered one kingdom. When we came into Eretz Yisrael, we conquered seven nations and 31 kingdoms. Take your scale out. Put Mitzrayim on one side of the scale. Put seven nations and 31 kingdoms on the other side of the scale. It has to weigh more, says the al Sheikh. No. Because when we were in Mitzrayim, we didn't deserve it. We were the Sha'im. And therefore, it's a bigger miracle that people who are undeserving to be saved by a miraculous exodus than to Jews that came into Eretz Yisrael that were actually tzaddikim at that time for miracles to happen. When miracles happen for tzaddikim, so of course, Peshita, we expect miracles to happen to tzaddikim. But when you see miracles happening to people that are of the Abu Nazara that don't deserve it, you scratch your head and say, wow, that's a, that's a hadush. And the Pesukim are hinting this to us. Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, in Mitzrayim you were plural. When we talk about things that are plural, that means there was no ahdut amongst the people. The people were divided. They were not considered one nation, as we say in this country, under God. They were all pirud, just like the nations of the world. And therefore, the Moshe Rabbeinu, in a very subtle way, is hinting to them, you know what your problem in Egypt was? It was etchem, it was plural, yotzeim, plural, and therefore, you didn't deserve it. However, when you came into Eretz Yisrael, 
then you became one. Which is you were one nation that was bounded under one God. And therefore Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to rebuke the people, but he didn't want to say it the Firush. So therefore, in a subtle way, he said, in Mitzrayim you were plural, and therefore it was a bigger miracle. And when we came into Israel, you were one. And therefore, there was, there was one belief in all God which brought the united the people to be united. Based on this, the Rab says, you would have thought when a person has a miracle happen to him. Let's say he's walking down the street, he gets bitten by a dog, and he gets saved. He, he's able to shoot the dog away. A big German shepherd dog comes right in to bite him, and he's able to escape. And not only escape, but he kills the dog. Wow, this guy, do like Hashem. The guy was able to beat up a dog. Now he continues to walk, and a lion comes after him. A lion comes after him, and he takes the lion with his bare hands, and he rips it apart. Now when he's going to go tell the story, which story is he going to tell? The story of the lion. What is he going to tell the story of the dog? The story of the lion is so greater than the story of the dog he forgot already. That's not nothing in comparison. So the Rab writes, you would have thought when we're going to go into Eris Yisrael, do we have to celebrate Pesach anymore? He would say, no, this is a bigger miracle. Mitzrayim was one nation. This was seven nations and 31 kings. So the Pasuk comes along and says, no. Even when you're going to come into Eris Yisrael and the miracles are going to be made to you, which means you must remember Mitzrayim because that's the bigger miracle. Even though it seems that Eretz Zeh was being saved from the lion and Mitzrayim was being saved from the dog, you're right. But look who was being saved. When we were saved from the lion, you deserved it. When you got saved from the Mitzrayim, you didn't deserve it. And therefore, you can never forget Yitziyat Mitzrayim. So these are some of the insights that the, the Rab al Sheikh Allah Bashalom gives us into the interpretation of these Pesukim. So we understand why the Yom, the day that we left, was significant. Why it says we had to go out with Hosek Yad, because it wasn't easy to take us out. We didn't deserve it. Why the mentioning of Hametz is mentioned because we have to go out in Hifazon in a in a speedily way not to fall into the abyss. And why is the Mitzrayim story written in plural? Because B'nai said we're divided in many beliefs of Abu Dazara. And it's Israel, we were considered one, one nation under God in the same belief system. And that's why the miracle of Mitzrayim is greater. Not because necessarily the Egyptians were greater than the other 31, because the people were undeserving. And since we were undeserving, it was a big ass. And that's why we have to remember that miracle throughout, even after our entrance into Eretz Israel. Oh, 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 oh.